Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. We are glad to present you the webinar Build a Protective Maintenance System with AWS Greengrass. The webinar is presented by our partner, SAM Solution. First, a few things about its organization. At the webinar, we will have a Q&A session at the end. You are able to type your question in a question box of the webinar tool already while the webinar is ongoing. You can use the chat box also to let us know about technical issues like sound, video quality or more. This webinar is recorded and we will make the webinar online available approximately in a week or two. Let's start. I'm glad to introduce Julia, Andre and Dimitri from SAM Solution. My name is Diego Bienz and I am Field Application Engineer at Toradex. I am working in our office in HORP. Before we dive in technical details, I would like to give you a short introduction of Toradex. We are specialized on ARM-based system on modules, also called computer modules. We have in-house hardware and software developers. Mostly we focus on Linux, but still support Windows CE solutions. Our board support package is in production quality and you are able to take it and work with it for volume production. We provide at least 10 years of product availability. Our products come with free support for the lifetime of the device. We do direct sales so we don't work with distributors. What is Toradex? Toradex was founded at 2003 in Switzerland. Now we have more than 3,000 active customers worldwide. We are a fast-growing company and now we have more than 100 people in nine countries. For support beyond, Toradex provides free pay support packages support and we have more than 45 proven partners. Our headquarter is located at Horb near Lucerne in Switzerland and we have eight more offices over the globe. Our products are used in various types of application like communication, medical and healthcare, laboratories, building automation and more. We have two product lines, Apalis and Colibri. All modules are PIN compatible within the family, so you can easily replace modules without carrier board redesign, even if another module has a completely different processor. As you can see, we have sums based on various system and chips from NXP and NVIDIA, like the IMX6, IMX7, IMX8, Tegra 2, 3 and K1, etc. Colibri has a lot of industrial buses like SPI, CAN, I2C, etc. But it lacks high-speed interfaces like PCI Express, USB 3, LVDS and the others. So we introduced the Palis family. But they are not meant to replace the Colibri modules. So you have the ability to choose depending what features or interfaces are required for your application. Now I'm going to hand over to Sam Solution. Thank you, Diego. Hello, everyone. My name is Julia, and today I and my colleagues Andre and Dmitri are representing SAM Solutions at the webinar. We'd like to introduce a predictive maintenance system that we have developed on a Toradex book to you. Andre Andrianov is a senior software developer, and he will provide a live demonstration of the system and address all technical matters. Dmitry Koshkin is a business development manager and he will handle all commercial questions. I am a senior marketing specialist and now I would like to give a short presentation about SAM Solutions and brief you on its key competencies and expertise in the development of IoT system and embedded solutions. For 25 years, we have been creating IT solutions for companies from all over the world, while focusing on businesses that operate in the dark region, the US and UK. Currently, we work with more than 70 customers. To name a few, we have created solutions for IBM, Daimler, Siemens, Fujitsu, SAP and others. 
Our company has more than 600 employees in its offices and delivery centers spread across Western and Eastern Europe and in the US. The headquarters are in Munich, Germany. We provide full cycle software development services that encompass all stages of custom software development. Depending on the project's specific requirements, we develop end-to-end -end solutions, deliver dedicated talents, or provide managed services. In addition to software engineering, we specialize in e-commerce, content management, the Internet of Things, and mobile apps. To ensure that embedded software operates smoothly as part of an IT environment and to encourage efficient functioning of connected devices, we provide system and embedded development services. Our IoT development projects are based on a thoroughly elaborate infrastructure that embraces all layers and components. We focus on smart homes, manufacturing, the automotive industry, as well as solutions for biometry-based protection of buildings and facilities. That said, our infrastructure can be successfully implemented in a variety of domains. Our team has created a predictive maintenance system that analyzes the state of a board motor. The system collects motor performance parameters, transmits them to Amazon Web Services and applies machine learning algorithms to identify the motor state based on Amazon Greengrass and Amazon Lambda technologies. Thank you for your attention and let's proceed to the technical part of the webinar. Now I'm turning it over to Andre. He is going to provide a live demonstration of our predictive maintenance system and tell about its capabilities and specifics. Andre, over to you. Oh, thank you, Julia. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to see all of you here today with us. My name is Andre, and uh, in the course of this webinar, I will introduce our predictive maintenance system based on a Toradex board to you. So, let's get started. Let's start from the concept. Uh, as you know, no modern production process is conceivable without electric motors, regardless of the industry. So, we have set our sights on the creation of solution that assesses the behavior of a motor and, based on that, determines the status and alerts about operations if they are in. For uh, this project, we were tasked with building the prototype of a predictive maintenance system that uh, specifies the state of a motor based on its uh, vibration frequency and force. Uh, in our prediction concept, we were guided by the fact that the abnormal motor vibration level signals that it is probably out of order. To specify the state, the system requires data that is typical for each of the device states. Uh, when it behaves normally, which means that it operates within normal operation boundaries, when it is turned off, and uh, when failure comes, for example, if the main shaft is bent, the motor vibrates and produces fluctuations that are different from those typical of the normal state when the motor is balanced. Our tasks, tasks we've uh, faced during the development of this project, there are two of them, practical and technical. Uh, so from the practical perspective, businesses need to continuously monitor their production assets, including machines that uh, are remotely connected to the network. Also equipped with the alert and, um, functionality, the solution reports any aberrations from slight malfunctions to device outage. In the technical context, uh, we were tasked with getting the most of out of modern technology to enhance the monitoring of the motor state. Uh, that is why we relied on AI methods for the detection of abnormal behavior and based data ana uh, analytics on a pre-trained model. Also, we've implemented simultaneous algorithm updating across all devices in the network, which enables better visualization on, of the result and uh, provides real-time data. 
what concerns the specifics of traditional solutions. Uh, if companies opt for one of the traditional solution, uh, solutions that are not related to the cloud, they should provide a number of specific conditions. They need to ensure that software is developed uh, and working in a protected environment that features its own infrastructure, data collection, and analytics. Uh, also, traditional solutions require dedicated servers for successful updates, while the maintenance and support of these solutions cannot exist without hiring, for example, of a dedicated employees, which may cause overstuffing. Along with the requirements that companies have to fulfill, they, so to speak, no cloud solutions uh, involve certain disadvantages. They don't provide efficient system monitoring, and uh, at the same time, they are quite time consuming and may come quite a high cost. Also, algorithm maintenance is complex enough, and uh, if an algorithm fails, prospects are slim that it can be stopped or reloaded. Um, let's switch to the specifics of cloud solutions. Uh, for our predictive maintenance system, we have opted for cloud technologies as they provide significant advantages. Unlike traditional solutions, the cloud enables streamlined software development, updating and monitoring, enhanced security and flexibility. When choosing a cloud solution for our system, we decided to use Microsoft Azure and uh, AWS, Microsoft IoT Edge and Amazon Greengrass respectively. You may have a question why both of them, not just one specific cloud solution. Uh, we were looking to create a flexible system that supports the interchangeability of cloud services so that it can fit all companies regardless of, of whatever they rely on Microsoft or Amazon. That is why we trained our system on Azure while we used AWS for the deployment. So uh, the platform interaction scheme can be presented as follows. Uh, here you can find the visual re representation of the whole process. So on the left side, you can see that we've attached a vibration sensor to the brushless DC motor. The sensor acquires vibration data from the motor and transmits it to the Toradex development board. On the board, we've implemented, deployed Amazon Greengrass uh, that analyzes the state of the motor in real time. Uh, it recognizes three states, an off state, when the motor is stopped, normal state, when the motor is on, and an abnormal state that indicates malfunctions such as under voltage, over voltage, or something else. Uh, the model uh, used in prediction can be deployed to an IoT enabled or edge computing device using different ways Depending on the requirements, it can be accessed uh, through Amazon S3 services, Azure Cloud Storage, and so on and so forth. So then the boards finally reports the motor status via a web interface or using various communication protocols such as MQTT, SMTP, etc., which depends on a company's business requirements. So um, let's switch to the perform training. The training process includes three steps. First, we've collected parameters that are specific to each of the states, when the motor rates, when it stopped, and uh, finally when it performs normally. And later, we've trained the model based on the above mentioned classification. So, data collection based uh, on the MPU 6050 sensor uh, by InventSense which you can see on the picture. And also, as you can see, it is uh, this is a specific sensor it uses IETC interface. Uh, in case you need SPI interface, you can use MPU uh, 6000 model. So let's switch to the prediction process. The prediction process works as follows. The data that is uh, the sensor collects is sent to the pre-trained model. Since each data set matches a specific class, normally it's zero or off, okay, or number one, or two, which means fail, uh, the model parses the received information and ranges uh, it in accordance with these statuses. Then the result can be displayed either on a web page or a non-LCD or via one of the communication protocols. As you can see, the communication works as follows.
we can seamlessly switch between each states without any trouble. So it means when we, for example, enter the fail state, we can later enter either off or OK state. It just depends on the data and the state of the motor. So uh, let's switch to the video presentation to show how it works in real, in real almost real life. Just a second. So as you can see, the system consists of two parts, the board itself and uh, a sensor, which is attached to the computer fan. As I've mentioned earlier, the connection interface is I2C for MPU6050 and uh, SPI for MPU6000. Everything is wired to the Calibri board using Arduino pin heads, which as you can see, is the prototyping process. And the sensor board is placed on top of the CPU fan and is secured on a mounting tape. Now the model predicts that the motor is turned off and uh, soon I will turn it on, uh, turn the power supply on to make the motor spin. So uh, the prediction uh, level is 99.6%. This is the response from the model which runs on the uh, Tordex board uh, in the secure environment provided by the Amazon Greengrass. <coughs> so I turn it on and uh, as you can see in this model, the model predicts that the motor is spinning correctly without any structural changes. Uh, you see that the prediction level is almost 100%, uh, so it's pretty accurate. And uh, in a few seconds I will increase the voltage level to the critical value of 20 volts, so that the motor will spin really fast, which in our case will mean that it works abnormally in an over voltage head. Uh, situation of uh, over voltage. And as you can see, the model says that the motor is in fail state uh, and over voltage. So the model also says that it's 100% of failure. It's sure that the motor works abnormally. So now I will decrease the volu uh, voltage in order not to burn the motor. So uh, we are almost back to the normal operation mode, 12 volts. Uh, and uh, another example I would like to show you is the situation when the obstruction happens. So uh, in order to show you the obstruction, uh, uh, situation. I need to put the rubber. You can see on the top left level. Uh, so, as you can see, the model detects obstruction itself. So, 12 volts is normal operation mode, but since the obstruction is on the uh, blades, so it shows that the obstruction is detected and it's also in fail state with the um, prediction percentage up to 100%. So now it went back to normal. So the concept, as you can see, is working correctly. Let's switch to the presentation. So uh, next comes the computer on model. We've based our prototype on as the framework for the development of a predictive maintenance system. We used Toradex NXP IMX6 UWL computer on model called Calibri IMX6 UWL, which is based on an NXP computer, uh, CPU, uh, which is also has optional support for uh, wireless interfaces, uh, Wi-Fi 802.11 AC and Bluetooth 4.2, in case you need to communicate, for example, with mobile application or another computer in the situation you don't have a wired connection or so, it's pretty useful. Also, uh, connection interface is SODIN compatible. Uh, and uh, as for me, the main feature I, I should mention that the model provides LTS support till 2028, uh, which is for me is pretty convenient in case of industrial usage. 
also its operational temperature ranges from minus 30 to plus 85 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty wide. And next comes the sensor itself. I've mentioned that previously it's MPU6050 by InventSense, which combines uh, two devices under one hood. It's three-axis MEMS uh, gyro and three-axis MEMS accelerometer combined with the digital motion processor, the MP. And uh, this sensor provides pretty enough uh, of accuracy for uh, gyro and the accelerometer, which can be configured easily using the appropriate software. Also, it has low power consumption in, in an active mode and uh, possible usage of either ITC or SPI interfaces depending on the needs of the project. Um, so, uh, it's almost end and I should try to sum up the project results. Uh, first of all, uh, we've developed an efficient prototype, I think, uh, of a predictive maintenance system that features a high probability of prediction results. Uh, you possibly you, you saw that it ranges from 85 to 99, almost 100 percent. For model training, we successfully applied algorithms that are based on AI, particularly TensorFlow and Keras frameworks. Also, we've made active use of innovative IoT technologies powered by Amazon, which allowed us to build a high-performance system that provides accurate predictions. And we've made heavy use of Toradex board that provide, uh, proved to have all the required characteristics and capabilities, allowing us to enable predictive maintenance system. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Then we are already in the Q&A session for the questions already popped up from your presentation. So the first question would be to you, Sam Solution. Um, it's called, is there a potential sc to scale the demo solution to more complex multi-sensor systems? And what are the options and constraints? Of course, uh, there is always space for um, finding an optimal and uh, more precise solution. Uh, and uh, in our case, uh, I think this system can be easily extended using additional sensors like microphones, uh, for example, optical sensors, just to give precise data from different sources, especially, for example, to use uh, voltage level sensors to to, to additionally detect the state, maybe the speed controller, which shows uh, the speed of the motor, for example, to control the, for example, if we are powering the device with its normal voltage and uh, something happens to help the model uh, predict uh, correctly the situation when something goes wrong, we can use the results from the model as well as the data acquired from voltage and uh, whole effect sensors and use it in the business logics. It just depends on the uh, specifics of the project itself and the requirements for this specific project. This is what I think. Okay. Thank you. Another question was, um, which model did you use on IMX6 ULL and which inference engine to run it? So which framework? Maybe also you could answer this question. Uh, the model used for this solution is uh, based on CNN. Uh, we've uh, uh, designed you created this model using Jupyter Notebooks, Notebook, uh, and um, uh, it is based on Keras frameworks. Uh, both uh, Jupyter and Keras uh, exist uh, on Azure and Amazon. So the, the main uh, feature maybe I think that's important 
that can, we can use the algorithm to create this model on either Azure or on Amazon. So uh, this also can be um, pretty convenient, depending on the customer needs, because uh, some customers require uh, this project to be um, implemented using Azure platform. Some customers require Amazon, so uh, we've proved the concept that it can be easily you know, generated uh, on both of them without any problems and can be transferred between them easily. So this is the idea. Okay. Thank you. So another question was, uh, which other Toradex hardware can be used for this demo application? We have um, several several models of hardware which you could use for such cases. The Colibri IMX6 ULL is a model which uh, fr from the Colibri family, which provides less interfaces than uh, the Apalis family, and you could possibly use uh, a lot of hardware models we have for such a demo because um, the, the requirements to the interfaces are not that high. You are able to search for products and also to filter um, your requirements of your products on our web page, which uh, we shared with you in the chat. And there you are able to, to see all the hardware we, we provide. For this demo, um, I think a, a lot of hardware would possibly go with, um, first of all, all the Apalis family, I think, would be able to do such a demo. And also in the Colibri family, you could use other boards like uh, the IMX7, I think, other other models from the IMX6. And for future, we also have the IMX8 on the Colibri module. The IMX 8X will be on Colibri, and we also have the IMX 8M on Apalis family, which you could use for such a demo. But it always depends on what your requirements are, and then you should choose the best fitting hardware on our web page. So another question we have here. Maybe also for SAM solution, require a question: Was it required to tailor the inference engine to the ARM architecture? I think that uh, maybe it's a good idea to write the question to the email directly because. Um, okay. We then we will answer this question later yeah. via mail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So and. The other question is, is it possible to get full demo for testing in my Apalis TK1 uh, to share the code, I, I, I think, is this question. Mm, yeah, I think it is possible. Also, so we'll also follow up via mail, I think, for this yeah, question, yeah. Yeah. for the code. Another question is, since IMX7 is an ARM A7 with Cortex M4. Do you have plan to run AVS Ethos on Cortex M4? So on the microcontroller uh, M4, is it possible to run AVS there? The AVS Ethos? It uh, really highly depends on the possibility of run the green grass itself on the on the CPU because we're a little bit limited with the environment and. Um, for example, uh, again, it is possible not to use the green grass itself, but the, as a result, we will be limited with the update functionality. So, um, if Amazon will implement the support for this specific CPU, then the running of this uh, project will be possible on this specific CPU. I mean, with the uh, Amazon functionality. Not as a stand standalone. Yeah, okay. I will follow up with another question. So, um, 
does the solution have potential to scale up the machine learning concept and uh, when what are the constraints and can you give us uh, the example of, of such cases yeah sorry uh, yes I think that uh, <laughs> surely can be extended and scaled uh, because uh, it is possible to implement such functionality when the model can be trained by, the, by itself but it will require much more effort to do so but it, uh, I assume it's possible I mean that uh, the model can um, acquire um, all the data needed to work uh, correctly then to for example again using Amazon or Asia solutions uh, to uh, update itself using new data uh, and uh, to make the prediction results more precise or to add additional functionality but in this case also the assistance of uh, pre-trained uh, staff may, re may be required for example to update the lambda itself because uh, the algorithm consists of two parts uh, lambda uh, which means this is the um, code written either on Python or Node.js or as far as I remember Java which is deployed uh, from the Amazon web service to the board itself using uh, Amazon Greengrass services and this lambda uh, runs the model itself and gets the prediction results from the uh, sensor uh, I'm sorry or gets the data from the sensor passes this data to the model and uh, provides the prediction results to the web interface or other uh, interface required by the solution so uh, in this case assistance will be needed to check or at least everything is trained correctly and the prediction results are correct so but yes it is possible but I cannot okay. uh, show uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> so another question is that the MPU 6050 sensor you showed is working under I square C therefore what is the occurrence of the actual vibration due to data sampling frequency uh, as far as I understand the question about the delays uh, yeah the data acquisition so as far as I remember it's nearly one package which consists of fixed values from two sensors each sensor transfers uh, the data split by three axes X Y and Z uh, for each sensor and so we, we get all six values from the sensor and uh, it's nearly two microseconds as far as I remember between the uh, packages it's, it's first of all it's highly dependent on the um, speed of the I2C interface also and uh, there may be the possibility that there will be some slight delays and some packages might be lost say one or two and uh, I think that in the case of our sample it's not so important to lose one or two packages it's just uh, an example but in case of real uh, real system uh, it will require of course real-time operation uh, more precise sensors and uh, other types of interfaces like maybe SPI uh, which communicates at a higher speed than rather than the I2C itself which uh, I2C is uh, 400,000 kilo uh, 400 kilohertz and uh, SPI as far as I remember will be possible to use more than 10 main maybe megahertz so the results will be provided a little bit faster than I2C and uh, in this case uh, just depends on the situation of course okay thank you 
we have a few questions about this uh, inference engine. So the first, was it required to tailor the inference engine to the ARM architecture with the ARM compute library? This was the first we didn't really understand. So we have um, explanation here. ARM compute allows to deploy inference engine from TensorFlow model and have it optimized for a given ARM architecture. Clarification for the question before. As part of the ARM Trillium project for embedded ML. So now the question is, could you give some details on the deployment of the inference engines from the cloud to the device? Does it allow easy and light differential updates of an already deployed model? Or does it require full engine redeployment each time the engine is iterated up? The situation comes that uh, the model itself, when it's deployed, uh, it, it can be updated only when the, the uh, model itself requires uh, another training. But in other cases, you don't need to redeploy the model a few times. You just deploy it and it exists in the uh, Lambda, inside the uh, sandbox, say. So it exists there. But if if it's maybe it's not the full answer, maybe you need to better to ask this question uh, using email. So I could try to give you more wide answer. Okay, so just um, if this answer wasn't in deep enough, just write us and we can clarify this via mail yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. Another question was about the prices of our system on modules and this is actually pretty simple all our prices of the system on modules are on our web page in the web shop transparent for everyone the prices depends on the number of sums of the system on modules you you order from us but you can all the, see all the prices in our web shop on torodex.com So next question is the Lambda function you deployed on the IMX6 ULL was a specific parser for the model you used or is it a generic parser? Uh, actually the Lambda function itself is um, kind of specific code because um, in general Amazon supports a few kind of triggers uh, which trigger the um, code inside the Lambda function. So in our case, we didn't use the default trigger for Lambda function. We, we wrote uh, the code, which starts immediately after the Lambda is deployed and started for the first time, because there are some limitations also, uh, because the Lambda itself is running inside the sandbox which has also some um, settings maybe you perform on the web page on the Amazon console. Uh, for example, you provide the time for how long the Lambda function must be executed and uh, after that the uh, sandbox will kill this function or uh, another option is you can execute this function uh, using some event. For example, when you upload something to S3 Cloud, uh, the monitored folder, so-called folder, uh, from the Lambda itself, if it finds that something uploaded to the folder, it can trigger the function itself. So in our case, we didn't use this also because we needed to run this function continuously and uh, that's why why we've written the code and that starts immediately after the deployment of the Lambda and then we used uh, uh, to load, we, we loaded the model using uh, Keras framework and the later we just uh, passed the data from the sensor uh, to the Lambda, to the model using uh, Keras API and uh, got the, the result from the results from the model. So each set 
we've provided to the set of data we've provided to the model, the model returned for some data in response. Normally, this data is presented like a um, uh, dictionary, maybe. It uh, contains of three, in our case, fields, three values in array. Uh, each value is represented as a float number, uh, which is kind of the prediction uh, of to, to which class the provided data might be belong to, because the model is not sure of 100% that this data might belong to some specific class. So this is pretty simple, at least in our case. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> Another question is, do you deliver to customers only in Europe? That's not the case. We actually deliver all over the world. You just can order via our web shop and we deliver it to you in any country. So I think maybe a last question to Sam Solution. Yes, I have here another one. Why you use near real time processing in the demo? Is there an option to go real time, let's say for industrial IoT scenarios? Yeah, sure, it's uh, possible to go real time, but in this case, uh, it is required to use um, some kind of pre kernel uh, firmware. It is possible to use the pre kernel firmware. Uh, it's kind of operation system before operation system, uh, which makes some specific parts of the maybe code or um, accessing the hardware in real time. So uh, the, uh, it's kind of how to say the example. Um, you, everyone knows the UEFI engine in uh, laptops. It's a new uh, version of BIOS. So everyone also knows that uh, UEFI, instead of previous version of BIOS, uh, still persists in the memory after the operation system has loaded. So uh, in this case, uh, regarding the solution of the RTOS or real-time solution, the pre-OS level will provide real-time operation, while the OS level will provide um, user interface, user space communication. So uh, the data will be acquired in real-time, uh, while the uh, user interface and some specific um, applications needed to work uh, for this specific solution will work in the user space in, the, in another kernel. Okay. Thank you very much. So we are at the end of our webinar. I would thank you for all for attending the webinar. Also a great thank to Sam Solution for the great demo and the presentation. And I wish you all a great day and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, see you.